The other day, I ordered an Uber, and I noticed that the Uber driver had 15,000 rides. So I got curious. So I asked him, I was like, how long have you been doing Uber? And he said, eight years. I was like, wow. And we began to have a conversation. He had a pretty nice car, it was clean, it was roomy. And he has been trying to get out of Uber for the last four years. Let me say that again, because we were talking and he was in some course he was working on becoming a claims adjuster and then to get his license. And he was working on that because what he told me was that the Uber money has gone down. He said, and if you didn't know, I drove for Uber in 2014 and I remember airport rides were like, $30, $40 in my pocket. And he said, moving, taking someone to the airport now was like $20. So Uber, and I've talked to Uber and Lyft drivers, they've rearranged it where you're not getting what you used to get for the same ride. And we we're, were just having the conversation. I, I wished him luck and everything. And it dawned on me that the gig economy is a trap. And I'm gonna to explain to you why it's a trap. Remember, he's been trying to get out of driving for Uber for four years. So this is where the, the, the trap comes into play. First of all, with Uber, you can get your money daily. Let's go back to one of my favorite expressions. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. So if you need to hustle up some money, you get in your car and let's say you want to make 300 bucks and you just drive for 12 hours, you go hard and you can download that cash at the end of your shift or first thing in the next morning, right? And what I have known, and this is one of the reasons that I have home economics as part of everything that I do is people don't manage their money well, because let me share some with you. The way that I live, I'm living on money that I made last year. What I do each year is take a certain amount of money earmark it and then put it in my personal checking account at the beginning of the next year. So the money that I'm making this year, I'm not living on. I'm actually going to live on that money next year. Now, why do I do this? As a business owner, your income can be kind of crazy sometimes. Uh, fortunately, my income has been pretty consistent the last four years, but just in case, so my next year spending isn't dependent upon my current earnings. Now there's a reason that I share this with you. I don't share this with you to brag or to boast. I share with you to impress upon you how important money management is. It, it is extremely important. And I, I mentioned this because Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, uh, I think Instacart pays out daily. I think all of these gig economy apps pay out daily. That is, I'll, I'll share a little story with you. Years ago when I had a merchant account, merchant accounts used to pay out two, three days later. It was kind of normal for them. And then we had a merchant account that would pay out the next day. Bank of America. Bank of America would pay out the next day. So we switched to Bank of America. And one of the reasons that I was doing that was auctions. 
auctions consumed a lot of cash, right? A lot of cash. And I would go ahead and go to the bank before going to the auctions and withdraw that money, right? To buy more units. And then, and then one day, I was sitting down and I was looking at it and I was like, we got to find a better way. So this is how I got, like, you know, I'll, I'll tell you. Back in the day, back in the day, you could do net 30s for business credit and get a business credit card in your EIN only. Literally, you could do this within months. And I did that. And I remember getting my first business credit card, which was a Home Depot MasterCard with a $15,000 limit. And I started to use that card to buy units at public storage and wherever else they would let me use it. And that took the pressure of getting that cash because I was able to spend on that credit card and then allow the cash to stack up in the business checking account. And it just got to be a much better situation versus me going to the bank and pulling out cash. Cause you know, banks are very different today. Um, I could not pull out cash out the bank the way that I was pulling out cash back then. Banks just don't keep that kind of cash in the, the banking, their banking branches anymore. But, uh, I pulled off and then I got another business credit card and I got another business credit card. So what I would do is use one credit card for one month. Then I would use another credit card for another month and I would use another credit card for another month. And what I would do is slowly, uh, I had a situation where that first credit card would get paid off maybe two or three months then the second credit card. So what it allowed me to do was have access to capital without it being incumbent upon current revenue. And I, I've gotten away from being reliant on current revenue where I've become the financial beast that I am today, where I don't like the money that I make this year, it can just sit in the bank. It could sit in the bank until next year, you know? And I, I share all this with you to share you, with you how I got to where I'm at today. Because money management, and this, like I said, this is the reason I include home economics with everything. Money management is absolutely supreme in you managing your life. It is supreme. You, you manage your money well, your life will be less stressful, less hassle free. But what I have noticed with the gig economy from a money standpoint, it's a trap because luxuries once tasted become necessity. So you get used to being able to pull your money out on a daily basis. That's the first problem. The second problem, and I'm beginning to see this because all gig workers are not <clears throat> created equal. I've noticed this because where I live, if you do not put in the name of the apartment complex and the GPS, it will take you back, back here. And I will get a call from a DoorDash driver. It's like, hey, and th their communication skills, essentially they suck. I mean, their communication skills are terrible. So I am looking at the average gig economy person and the average gig economy is like you go to your phone, you download the app, you go ahead and put your information in. And the next thing you know, you're hired. There is no formal interview. Once again, from the standpoint of someone needing to do something to get some money, this is great. No bias, no weirdness, no trickeration. You just go to the app, 
if you pass whatever background check they have, you get the job and then you can start making some money. So another thing I have noticed is the lack of money management. In the case of the Uber driver with 15,000 trips, he cannot get out of Uber because he is addicted to making that. He's addicted to that money. And then with the communication skills, which I have had conversations because essentially this is the directions. All right. This is what you need to do. You need to turn around, get back on the road that you came, that you turned off into the, the road back here. Go back to that main road, make a right, go around the curve, make another right and come all the way to the back and you'll get here. Sounds simple, right? And where I live, I can stand on the balcony and watch. And they always do this. They always, there's a building right there. They always stop at that building. Even though that building has a completely different address, they always stop at that building. And I'm just sitting there like, what is the problem here? What is the problem here? Because in my mind, it is simple. But once again, I don't know the education levels of these people, but typically I have learned that when I get someone who's not particularly that bright, and I'm not trying to be dismissive or insulting, it is what it is, that I will have to stay on the phone with them to get them here. I would literally have to go here, make a right here, step by step by step by step with a grown adult. So lack of money management skills, lack of communication skills, inability to follow directions. So the gig economy is a bad situation for many, many people. And I've seen on, you know, um, TikTok. This, this is the place. I don't really consume a lot of TikToks, but I've seen because they, they will make Google because in my phone every morning there is a list of popular articles on Google. And there was this one guy who was doing DoorDash and he had an order where he didn't get tipped. This guy was literally crying tears crying tears and you know, he was just talking about, you know, you need to tip, you need to tip. We out here working hard, grown man crying on TikTok, literally tears streaming down his face. Then there was another person who was doing Instacart and she was in it doing Instacart and she was halfway through the order and they canceled the order and she went on TikTok and she lost her mind. And once again, I look at the whole picture. I know what it is to be pressed. I know what it is to be broke. I know what it is to be hungry. So I understand that these people are in a financially pressed situation and why something that would appear to be not that big of a deal is a very high urgency creates a sense of desperation. I want you to think how bad does this man's life have to be for him to go on TikTok, grown ass man crying on TikTok because he didn't get a tip. In my estimation, his life has got to be horrible. It's got to be horrible. Once again, I understand that I come to you guys from a privileged position. I get that. I haven't worried about normal bills in over a decade. I haven't worried well, going on too. I like, once again, I have a very good financial setup. I don't know what it's like to like, this happened um, 
about three years ago. This happened with my other X5. Somehow I got a slow leak and the tire, actually I ran on the tire and the tire just literally came off the rim. And I was able to make it the Butler's tire and they just put a new tire on and it was like 321 bucks. So two, 321 bucks in two hours out my day. That was it. It wasn't um, a financial crisis. This is something that I saw consistently with my rental car business that people would run over something and it would become a financial crisis if they had a flat tire. If, you know, once again, I understand that I come from a position of privilege. I come from a position of abundance. I come from a position of where I don't have to worry about such things. And it was annoying as hell because I was having these conversations with these people because they would tell me that the tire was flat. There was no accountability, none whatsoever. And I've never had anyone say, hey, you know, I ran over something. Never had that. It's like the tire is flat and you, Mr. Owner of the car, need to fix it. That just irked me to no end. I know some of you remember the um, Kill Switch Chronicles. I was just that, I literally had 60 tires flattened and I had these conversations. And to a few people's credit, they just went ahead and fixed the tire. They never called me because they understood that they ran over it. But I had this conversation with 60 grown people about flat tires. Because to get a new tire was gonna be like two. Well, actually, here's the thing. Uh, a lot of these cars, BMWs, they didn't have a spare because they had run flat. So they didn't have a spare. So they were gonna have to get the car towed and then replace the tire. So we're looking at about three something to $500, depending on where the car is. I have come to a new understanding that if you're a gig worker, a $500 expenditure is a financial crisis. It's a fun, th this is why I feel that gig work is just a trap because it gives you money. You get that money, right? But you don't really get enough money to elevate your life. I remember Another thing with gig workers, um, they will like do an oil change and they would pester the shit out of me to get remuneration via cash app. Literally, I had someone call hire car on me because he needed his $75 that bad, $75. And what I am seeing that gig work is a massive, massive trap because these people never get to the position where they have just financial surplus. I'm not going to say financial abundance. I'm going to say financial surplus. Um, you got a lot of people who are going to do gig work, who are going to do Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, um, Uber Eats, and they're going to get stuck in these jobs. They're going to get trapped in these jobs. Number one, don't know how to interview. Number two, don't know how to manage money. Number three, poor communication skills. And what I am seeing is this is not going to get better. It's going to get worse because in the future, there will be more gig economy apps. I mean, this is a billion dollar business model. Create Airbnb, create Uber, create DoorDash, create Instacart. They're leveraging people, their cars, because I mean, Airbnb is the world's largest hotel and they don't own any property. 
Uber is the largest taxi service. They don't own any cars. DoorDash is the biggest delivery food delivery service. They don't own the cars, vans, nothing. So the gig economy app is not going to die because it's a billion dollar business. It's a multi-billion dollar, like the guy, uh, Travis Uber, billionaire. He's a billionaire based on his stock position. So there's right now, there's somebody in Silicon Valley thinking of the next gig economy app. So in the future, you're gonna have more people participating in the gig economy and they're gonna get trapped in these low wage jobs. And I don't think that it's really good for the economy when you have people who are working 40, 50 hours a week and cannot afford rent on a decent place. I mean, like I said, I, I just literally look at who is participating in the gig economy and I just shake my head because it's getting worse and worse and worse. And it's bad. It is really, really bad. And so many people are going to get trapped in this gig economy cycle because first of all, once again, luxuries tasted become necessity. Once tasted become necessities, they're addicted to that daily pay. Uh, I think you can get daily pay from McDonald's. Like I said, I don't really know a lot about the fast food service industry from the inside. I'm just a customer. But once again, if you cannot properly manage your money, you're going to be forever a slave to these low wage jobs because you need some money. I just don't see it getting any better. I'm just waiting on the next big gig economy app to come out because there will be one. Rest assured, there will be one because um, it's just too much money. It's just too much money to be ignored. And like, there's so many. There's Uber, there's Lyft, there's DoorDash, there's Uber Eats, there's Roadies, there's Amazon Flex, there's Spark. I mean, every time I turn around, there's like, I'm owner of a new app where you can literally go in this app, sign up, and become a delivery person. And also, I want you to think, what's the end game for Uber or DoorDash? Okay, you're picking up and delivering food. What's the end game? What's the end game? What's, what's the matriculation? I mean, someone left a comment on my last video talking about this 53 year old man was talking about getting into music. And during one of my um, training sessions, someone makes beats. And then we kind of went down YouTube to see who was selling beats on YouTube and music is one of the hardest ways to make money. When you hit big and you have a hot single out, that can be a lot of money real fast, but there's a reason that we only have one Michael Jackson. There's a reason that we only have one Prince. Music is extremely hard to make money. And what I'm seeing is a lot of people in the gig economy are musicians, actors. So you're doing a low wage job to participate in an extremely hard industry. I'm not here to piss upon your dreams. You know, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. However, statistically, the odds are against you. And this is what I'm seeing because 2023, you're going to see more people than ever 
pile into these gig economy jobs. And I don't I just don't see it getting any better because one of the things I've learned is all of these apps set and change the algorithm where you can start off making this, but at a certain point, because I, I watch um, DoorDash videos, I watch, you know, and just talking to Uber drivers and talking to Lyft drivers that they have changed the algorithm where the Uber and Lyft is making more money than ever and the drivers are making less. And the same thing with DoorDash. So at scale, you know, at scale, if you can pull 25 cents off of this trip, you multiply that times millions or tens of millions of trips that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So this is what's happening with DoorDash, Uber, Lyft, Uber Eats, that the people who get into Instacart, I remember there was a big brouhaha about Instacart uh, where people's like, it, it, you know, it was, it was good during the pandemic and then it started to suck. And I want you to think, and this is just from me to you, if you are in the gig economy ecosystem, you need to get out. It's not going to get better. You're not going to make any more money. You may go in making a certain amount of money and it's going to go down because these are the, they're, these, uh, these companies have IPO. would They have now shareholders to consider. So you're going to get screwed. What you need to do is start working on developing a skill. You need to get out of that Uber. You need to get out of that Lyft, you know, temporarily, you know, if you do it part time, that's cool. That's cool. Part time money. That's not a problem because that means that you've got something else that you make most of your money from. But full time Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, um, get out get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, because it's not going to get any better. It's just going to continue to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And, you know, fortunately, I feel that when I was living in that boarding house and I was working at labor ready and labor force, I feel that was my gig economy phase. You know what? Cause essentially you would wake up at four 30 in the morning, go to this place and hope to get sent on a job. And it was daily pay. And one of the things that I did is I got myself out of that situation where I could actually wait two weeks to get a check. I started to manage my money much, much better. I started a savings account. I don't care how much money you make. You have got to start managing your money better. Because this, this is a trap. It is a trap. It's like I said, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And you need to focus on getting a skill like this, this Uber driver, 15,000 rides, eight years, eight years, eight years. It's a trap. Now, once again, to my Uber, my gig economy workers, this may or may not be for you because understand you guys are financially pressed and you don't have a lot of money, but what you want to do is get in the intellectual property school and you want to work your ass off. You want to start a YouTube channel. You want to start a blog, a pop. You, you want to do something that's going to give you a future because the way that it's going, you're going to become an indentured server forever in these gig economy apps. They're not going to get any better. And just like, when I was at labor ready, labor, um, labor force, labor ready, I had to elevate myself out of that situation because once again, I just went from low wage job to low wage job, never got any better, never made any more money. It just stayed the same year after year. And one day I woke up because you know, 
I am a big consumer of DoorDash, 100%. And like I said, as a part-time job, I have no problem with it. But as a main gig, it's your full-time gig, that's no bueno, no but man, don't, don't do it. So what you wanna do is get yourself in the intellectual property school or the program and start building some skills, marketable skills. Right now, YouTube, TikTok, it's white hot. It's right, it's, it's hot. Uh, I found a YouTube channel. And this guy just started like three months ago and he's making between 30 and $50,000 a month from a channel that is not even three months old. He just started this. So the, the, the opportunities are wide open on YouTube. The opportunities are like, like again, I will never do a TikTok channel because I know what it does to your brain. But once again, if you're out trying to scratch out some money, make a living, you gotta do what you gotta do. So go ahead, get in the intellectual property school. The link is below and start working really hard to escape that trap. Because this is a big trap. I mean, I remember when I was at Labor Force and Labor Ready, there were guys in their 50s sitting in there with me. And I said to myself, I don't want to be 50 years old doing this crap. And I kept that promise to myself. So, once again, understand what you're dealing with. Understand that these companies have no love for you. Understand that you are just a piece of machinery in the system. And unless you look out for yourself and you get out, I mean, I'm just sitting there thinking. I remember when I did Uber for about six weeks, I could not imagine doing that for a year full time. I could not imagine that. I mean, just what happened to me in six weeks, I can only imagine what will happen to an Uber driver over a year. And like, once again, and this lets me know that the economy has gotten really, really bad. When Uber first started, it was rare to have a female Uber driver. Now, whenever I take Uber or Lyft, 50% uh, chance that I will have a female driver. That's how bad the economy has gotten. It's gotten that bad. So go ahead, get in the intellectual property school. Link is below. And one of the things I'm probably gonna get ready to do is start doing two live trainings per week to give you guys more time to learn, ask questions, to build on things. So that's gonna happen fairly soon.